Hey, good evening, everybody. Happy Sunday. Welcome to Etc. Live. I'm your host, Kelly Barrett. I am super excited to have my guest tonight. We are in the midst of a Canadian rock and roll royalty, um, celebrating 50 years in the business, bringing us music that we still want to hear. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and say hello to uh, Ronnie King from the Stampeders. Ronnie. Hello, uh, Kelly. You're too kind. You're too <laughs> kind. It's such an honor to have you here. And I, you know, I'm happy to have you here, Ronnie, for two reasons. Uh, number one, because it's my last show of the years before I go home for Christmas. And number two, because the Stampeders are celebrating 50 years. I'm honored. Yes. I'm on your last show. No, oh, well, thank you. Well, yeah, off to Saskatchewan tomorrow for Christmas. And what about you? You got plans for Christmas? No, no, I, but. Uh, yeah, uh, just to go to a dinner and whatnot. But uh, uh, we take the winters off, uh, you know. <laughs> stampede. We've uh, we've definitely <laughs> experienced uh, <laughs> everything there is to experience on uh, on the road with the winter conditions. I would imagine. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Nobody needs yeah. to drive through those anymore if you've all done that trip trip before for sure. But you are you do have a big tour coming up in 2023, and we're going to talk about that here. I in a yes. bit. So, uh, you know, 50 years, wow. Like, uh, let's go back to the beginning, Ronnie, because it's interesting because the Stan Peters originally started out as a five piece band. Um, I think that was six, before you, six piece band called the, Re, the Rebounds, I think it was. Well, yeah, they didn't become six until I joined. So, <laughs> and now it's, and then there were three. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the six-man band left Calgary in uh, 1966, and uh, we, uh, 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 under the guise of our our, uh, our manager, Mal Shaw, he was very instrumental in uh, in getting us going and uh, and having us songwrite and all this and that and uh, and uh, you know that had big plans to uh, um, that's all the places I'm going to take you guys because. We basically said, you know, what kind of a name is Stampeders? Uh, what's, what's wrong with that? What's well, you know, that's Stampeder football team, Stampeder hotel, Stampede City Motors, Stampede everything to do with, of course, the biggest attraction in Calgary is the Calgary Stampede. Right. <laughs> Excuse me. I think it's a great name. Yeah. Well, uh, we didn't think so. So he said, well, it's. Uh, it's it's worth a try, you know. I mean, uh, we're, we're going to do the image up with cowboy hats and uh, matching boots and matching denim outfits and so on. And then uh, you'll have the image of that, you know. And oh, geez, <laughs> do I have to wear my hat? I was I was <laughs> constantly trying to not. You know, wear my hat because I, I said my do, my my do. You're ruining my do with this hat. <laughs> it's all about the hair, people. <laughs> yeah. So uh, can't get the base of that all like that. And anyway, so uh, we left uh, Calgary, and uh, first place we hit uh, on the way to Toronto was uh, Terry David Mulligan's place. Who, who we knew from Calgary. He was a DJ in Calgary at CKXL, I think it was. Right. And, uh, yeah, so we had we had known him and whatnot. And it uh, turns out that he's he's able to let us stay at his house, to <laughs> at his place. So uh, here, here's five guys, you know, homeless. <laughs> uh, yeah, just uh, saying, well, you know, wh wherever you can find something, the couch, good. <laughs> take it so uh, he did for the first night or two that we uh we were on our way and our our manager had booked some places that helped pay up our way right. to uh, yeah. toronto and so on else so i remember playing in saskatoon uh at, shortly after uh, terry david mulligan's place and uh we were playing and so on else and we had heard that the sir douglas quintet was in town She's about a mover. She's about a mover, you know, and uh, so on. So uh, these guys, uh, they came to see us. We're at our club. And oh, my God. You know, the, the, Were you nervous? Uh, Sir, yeah. The Sir <laughs> Douglas Quintet is here. You're kidding. Yes. And uh, so 
so we, we did our best, you know, and someone else. And uh, uh, <laughs> one guy said, you guys got a real groovy sound. <laughs> a groovy sound. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, not boys, and because uh, they were all southern boys, you know. So, right. and we weren't; we were northern boys. <laughs> so northern, right? So northern. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that was quite exciting for us to be uh, to have their endorsement. Of, I would imagine, uh, especially early sure. on in the game, right? Especially early on in the game, Dwayne Watson just popped in. He's joined. Dwayne's a really talented musician. He says it's a great name for a great band. Thanks, hey, Dwayne. Well. <laughs> So I'll, then, I'll say no comment. So, so I, I imagine now you don't have to wear your damn cowboy hat unless you want to, right? That's right. I usually wear a headband, you know, and they keep saying, "Hey, let's let's put that in the merch. Some headbands for sure." That's not a bad idea, actually. That's that's not a bad idea at all. I had a do rag for a day or two. <laughs> I tried to sell those. I don't think they went as. Uh, as well as they they'd hoped. Oh so, man! So, yeah. but the you know the the band went on to such huge huge success and was touring. You know, you guys were touring the states and and uh, Europe and and winning all kinds of awards. And at any point, because I think like 1971, I think it was when you like you got you guys won four Junos in one year. Like, yeah, in one year, yeah. four Junos in one year. Did it did it ever, Ronnie? At a point, feel like overwhelming? Like kind of like. You know, from sleeping on Terry David's floor, and, and you know, to now, like, you know, boom. Yeah, we we lucked out in the seventies uh, by the sheer fact that we were a seventies band. But yeah. uh, that was uh, our year, uh, us and Anne Murray, and uh, <laughs> winning those Junos and so on. You know, and uh, I think Richard got Writer of the Year for Sweet City Woman, and yeah. our manager. Yeah got uh, our manager got the uh, producer of the year and then we had i think the album of the year I, i'm the memory's short now yeah no that's a long time ago no but but, it, but i have it all here so it was best-selling single for hit the road jack in 76 best-selling album in 76 um four juno awards um in one year 1979 uh for best vocal instrument group best single for sweet city woman and uh, best producer for Rich Dodson. And, hmm. you know, I was going through, like, as I was kind of getting ready for the show, Ronnie, I was going through, you know, just, and not that it's all about the awards, but I was struck at how many, you know, the Juno Awards and the nominations and, and you've been inducted into, uh, I had to write them all down because, and I didn't even get them all because it's, it's not a five hour show, <laughs> but, uh, you know, like this, CJ92 Classic Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Western Canada Music Hall of Fame, uh, SoCan Songwriters Hall of Fame, SoCan Songwriters Hall of Fame twice, SoCan Lifetime Achievement Award. Wow. And I'm and I'm wondering, I'm wondering, you know, the awards are great, I would imagine, you know, to get the accolades from the industry and, and your fans. But I'm wondering what's what is actually the most important achievement in your mind, and it can be professionally or personally. That you would hold in a high regard. The uh, the time that we get on stage and be so accepted by by the audience, by the crowd, the adulation that comes with, and so on. And uh, I take it for granted. I uh, I <laughs> I'll I'll say stuff like, uh, "She can't understand it uh, by now." <laughs> By this time of the show, the stage is full of women's underwear. <laughs> it's a different time. I think times are different now. Right? Yeah, you know. <laughs> so, anyway, I can't take it too serious because it's supposed to be fun, you know. Absolutely. Well, you you yeah. have a, you have a great sense of humor, Ronnie. Because when I when we were first chatting about you coming on the show, this is when I knew you were going to be a fun guest because you were while you were cracking some pretty good jokes. And then I said to you, "Hey, I have this show and I and I feature Canadian legends." And you said to me, "Well, I certainly qualify, don't I?" <laughs> <laughs> and I and it wasn't you were joking, obviously. And I thought I like this guy. And then and then you told me some funny some other jokes and and I you know and you are right. It is it is about fun. Is it still yeah. fun? Is it still fun for you to tour? 
it's supposed to be fun. Well, not the traveling, but uh, yeah. certainly yeah. when you get up there and do your 90 minutes on stage, uh, it's undeniably uh, great for, for the crowd to be accepting you and basically build it all the way up to end of the night, standing ovation, uh, encore, we want more, and so on. And, uh, you know, uh, here's how they introduce us these days. You remember them from the 70s. Now here they are in their 70s. <laughs> and how amazing is that? You know, yeah. no, really, Ronnie, there's not a lot of artists that can say that, you know, 50 years later, you know, they're out touring and people still want to hear the music and it's still relevant. And now I imagine it's pretty cool because I would imagine you get a couple of generations now in the crowd. Well, yeah, for sure. And as well, uh, we can proudly lay claim to the fact that we are the original three guys that are all the voices that people hear. And uh, Rich sings Sweet City Woman. Kim sings Wild Eyes. I sing Then Came the White Man and so on, you know. And so uh, that's what people are getting, the voices, et cetera. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, et cetera. Yeah, I like that, et cetera. And yeah, and you don't see that much anymore. Like, you know, and I mean, and I mean, things happen. People come and go and band members change. And and so what, what I, I'm curious because, you know, going from a six piece band to a three and my understanding is that some members left and then you just stayed as three. Was there ever a thought maybe to add a fourth or, or is it kind of like it's not broke? Well, that's not. No, we, we had expanded the band after the uh, six man band uh, broke up. In you know, it went in stages. Uh, one guy left, one of the lead singers that was Kim's brother. Then uh, Brendan, the bass player, left as well. So I switched to bass and so on. And uh, and then my brother Van, he left uh, to go back to Calgary as well. So we said, Well, what should we do? It's a, well, he stays a trio. Oh my god, trio, yeah. <laughs> You busy it up on a bass, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> which, which I do it up now. And uh, I play with a pick. I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. 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 I'm not one of these guys. Right. Right. Looks like you a know? whole lot of carpal tunnel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. And I can do things on the pick that uh, these guys can't do. So yeah. proud. It's a proud moment. <laughs> awesome yeah you know ronnie we're getting a ton of comments and people are people are popping in i kind of figured that was gonna happen so i'm just gonna go to a few of them now so uh so simone so uh says congratulations on 50 years of great music shine on ronnie thanks so much it's actually 52 because oh, is it 52 can, wow well take out two years for uh covid you know we were ready to celebrate it two years ago tour wise and all that couldn't tour Etc. Right. right. Well, then I think you're celebrating 52 years because I think COVID should count for five years. I think you should be celebrating 57 years because I think I think COVID <laughs> should count for five years of whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, my good friend Gary Jones says 50 years. Bravo. Hi, Kelly and Ronnie. Again, if you remember the 70s, you never lived them. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Now the 70s. Hey, we're the, I speak out of the 70s. I, you know, and, and Gary's comment just made me think. It was a different time back then, you know. There, there was a lot of, you know, a lot of drugs and a lot. Were there shenanigans on the road back in the seventies? Well, where's where I was concerned? <laughs> <laughs> because I always, uh, I always went out of my way to to meet the, the the headliners and so on. Right? Joe Cocker became a really good friend and so really? on. Well, Jack became a very good friend, uh, and uh, it just and all because. I had the occasional joint. Right. <laughs> <laughs> really. And uh, great way to make friends. These, these guys would, uh, you know, now that it's legal, I can be open about yeah, it. But these 100%. guys, oh, you've got some uh, some shit, man. Do you? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> I'm <laughs> the man. Way. Yeah. I'm right this way. <laughs> I'm your man. So. Uh, <laughs> Joe Cocker high, and I got the Jay Giles band high. The Jay Giles band, I'll tell you about uh, them boys. I was uh, sitting in their hotel room just because I'm the outgoing guy. And uh, <laughs> I was sitting in their hotel room, and all of a sudden, 
<laughs> one of them starts ripping shit out of the walls, you know, like the telephone. <laughs> the telephone. <laughs> you you guys <laughs> make too much money, or what? so we were trying to uh, to fix all that, you know. Anyway, so they said, uh, "Oh, I said." I got an idea. If you want to be mischievous, uh, why don't we go down to the laundry room and pay a dollar dollar fifty for the soap? And you know that big fountain in the middle of the holiday in here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good idea, Ronnie. Good idea. Shenanigans. So, <laughs> so Love it. off we go to get this soap and whatever else, right? We tried to pour a little bit in the thing for the fountain and everything but it it never bubbled <laughs> you know, just a bunch of soap that just laid there whatever and all of a sudden a security guard catches us hey what are you guys doing there <laughs> we're banned we ran away like i bet days. let's see a shenanigans and it's all your fault right because you brought the drugs man i know <laughs> <laughs> i know Everybody at yeah. home is going to be. Everyone at home is going to be thinking about trying that soap in the water fountain thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, man! Perhaps. So yeah, uh, so yeah, Gary Jones. Thanks for thanks for reminding us of the seventies. <laughs> uh, oh, Renita Zintel is another musician. She's just saying congratulations, Ronnie. Uh, Yuzi is popping in to say hi, Kelly. I love the Stan Peters, a huge part of my life, always since I was a young kid. Uh, Lee D. Wolf. Uh, oh, hi, Lee. Lee's, like, Lee's from the Netherlands. Says, uh, hi, Ronnie. Shout out from Lakeland and the home of Barbie Curtola. I have been a royal fan since I was a young kid cruising around on my Stingray bike with your songs blaring from my little blue transistor radio. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and he's from the Netherlands? I, somewhere in the Netherlands, yeah. I don't. I, he's a Facebook friend of mine. I'm not really too sure, but uh, yeah. On the <laughs> Kunnen jullie nog goed uh, Hollands praten? Want ik kan het nog goed hoor. I'll tell you a story about uh, in Holland. I can still speak Dutch. I was born in Rotterdam. That's Holland. impressive. Yeah, cool. <laughs> and anyway, uh, we uh, went back. Stamp feeders were now a big deal and so on else. And Ronnie King is one of the, was a Dutchman and he's in a Canadian supergroup, etc. So, uh, Anyway, uh, we go on the Willem Dice show. He's kind of the Johnny Carson of uh, of the Holland, right? And so on. Right. Else. And I was chosen to do the interview. Uh, and they said, uh, well, Ronnie, uh, how are the Stampeders doing? Well, we're, we're great. We're touring around the uh, Netherlands. We're doing uh, Belgium and France next and uh, England, <laughs> etc." cetera. So, uh, and all of a sudden he says, uh, well, did you wish to conduct this English in, in English or in Dutch, whatever? And I said, oh, the geeft niet, want kan dan zo goed van de spraat. And 300 people in the studio audience were, oh, look, is that something? He's a Dutchman. <laughs> they would have loved that. And speaking of the Netherlands, um, the band also won the Edison Award in the Netherlands. Yes, we did. Yes, yeah, we most did. Most promising, most promising group. Wow. Yeah, and uh, very exciting, of course, to... Uh, have lived the lives that we have and still are, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're it's it's just undeniable when how to when you're touring around from coast to coast to coast. I mean, Vancouver Island to we just finished well a month and a half ago or so. Uh, Saint John's, Newfoundland. Oh. Uh, Saint John is New Brunswick. Saint John is New Brunswick. Saint John's, Newfoundland. <laughs> yeah. So, so somebody taught me how to say that. He said, okay, here, here's what you think of there, boy. Uh, St. John's Harbor. Oh, oh, that's a good idea. So no, that's, that's, how, you keep, that's how you keep yep. it straight. Well, it's funny you were just mentioning that because uh, I was I was reading that uh, promoter Donald K. Donald. I know that name for some reason. Um, yeah. that was quoted as saying that Stampeders were the top Canadian concert draw, like bar none. From 71 till 1974, and we're the first Canadian band to tour, like you just said, literally from one end of the country to the other. Mm. So you guys were a little, you guys were pioneering, you know, you're pioneers in some way. And and also um, you guys were one of the first rock bands in Canada to actually have like rock videos out. 
I think that could be true to a certain extent because, uh, I mean, we're, we're, we're kind of the first band that, that made some noise uh, record-wise and so on else. Where there was Bobby Curtola and there was a few, you know, uh, Anne Murray and so on, et cetera. But we were the first actual rock band or country rock band, whatever you want to call it. it uh, we played pop music. That's how we looked on it. And uh, so it... Uh, it just was nothing but fun. It was nothing but one big party, you know? <laughs> you should write a book. But apparently what happens on the road stays on the road. But if you ever want to write a book, I happen to know a writer. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, I've basically written one, but it's not, it's kind of halfway through. Oh, is that right? Hey? Oh, great. Yes. Yes. Yep. Um, oh, do, do you know John Mundy? Yep. So Johnny, John's saying that Ronnie has been a troublemaker as long as I've known him. <laughs> and that's a long time. <laughs> yeah. So, Smart Alec. So, yeah, he's been an old town. Hi, Mike. Maggie Holes in the house. Merry Christmas uh, to you, Ronnie. <laughs> Kelly, Merry Christmas. Uh, Maggie, Barb Sim, uh, you are so vibrant. She's talking to you, Ronnie. Appreciate your music and wishing you many beautiful blessings in the new year in this holiday uh, Bless your heart, bless your heart, my dear. There's nothing that I, there's nothing that I like better than being vibrant. Right? <laughs> That's me. It's my middle name, Ronnie Vibrant King. <laughs> so, well, here's a question for you. Do you remember where you were the first time you heard yourself on the radio? It used to be Ronnie Virile King. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say Virile? <laughs> yeah. Viral, oh, not to be confused with Viral. <laughs> Viral. Yeah. All right, enough fun. Enough no, fun. no, no, just, just go with it. But I did, I did want to know if you remember what, what, you, what it felt like the first time you heard yourself on the radio. Do you remember that? Oh, remember? <laughs> very much so. We, uh, we, you know, it wasn't the very first time because we'd we, we were hearing ourselves on Canadian radio, right. and so on else. But then. We were uh, doing a couple of gigs in Southern Ontario already and, uh, you know, going living in Toronto. So away we went to do some high school sometimes or, uh, you know, some community hall. Anyway, so uh, we could get WABC out of New York, which is, you know, it's the biggest station in New York in, in right. the States. <laughs> and... Uh, W A B C. Here's the new band from Canada. Hey, oh, oh my God, no! Look, we stopped the car. We stopped the car. We ran around like idiots. We were jumping on the car. People were driving by said, "Oh, those guys are probably drunk." Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we weren't yet. Long ears. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, driving, but uh, it was that was, yeah, very exciting to hear that we had made it in the states because yeah uh, that's a tough one. Out, yeah a brand new band out of canada the stampeders okay one of those so, life is good moments hey one of those life is good <laughs> 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 so what do you think it is wanting about the stampeders what do you think it is about their music that has you know has this longevity of 50 52 years and me you know, it's not <laughs> It, it's all me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> Good answer, <It's>... Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I mean, all three of us have written basic hits that, you know, this Canadian for sure. And uh, Rich being the biggest hit maker of, uh, of the world for us it was Sweet City Woman. I wrote the B-side, and that's what uh, uh, Rosalie Trumbly was going to go on. With w and W, no, not WABC. It was uh, in uh, Windsor. Windsor. Now ah, you had to know. I had to be there. <laughs> she, she chose my B-side, Gator Road. Oh, you know, and it should have been much bigger. And uh, But uh, I'm, I'm happy with my lot. Yeah, no doubt, eh? And so what was the writing process like? I'm curious, Ronnie. Was it a collaborative effort, or did you... How did that it, work? Uh, it, uh, none of us collaborated in those days. Uh, 
So everybody wrote their own songs, and uh, whatever guys could contribute to those songs, you know, like for instance, Sweet City Woman, and I, my, and I, I wrote that. I wrote, <laughs> so yeah, and then, and Kim wrote the drum parts and whatnot, and and Rich took the credit. <laughs> <laughs> Rich. No, I kid him. I would say that in front of him. <laughs> well, hopefully he's not watching. I bet maybe he is watching. Who knows? <laughs> you'll, be getting, you'll be getting a call after the show. Oh, yeah. Lee, so Lee DeWolf has a question. He wants to know who was Oh My Lady written about. What a beautiful song. Such a beautiful song. It's hard to say because it was Kim who wrote that song. And uh, I, I imagine it was one of his wives. You know, it, it could have been or or not, you know, and if it was not, then he was cheating on a, one of his wives. <laughs> no, but uh, who knows? I mean, sorry, sorry, we, sorry, we didn't have a sweeter answer for you, Lee. <laughs> but it was an honest one. I love it. <laughs> but, but who knows? What, who knows what Sweet City Woman was written about? I mean, it was just something we pulled out of our hat, you know, and uh and uh, Rich come up to it, to the studio with these riffs. Uh, I think he had uh, Sweet City Woman and Devil You. And uh, I don't know if he had Wild Eyes yet or not. But uh, anyway, Carry Me he had, you know. And uh, Rich wrote Carry Me. Kim sang it. I played bass, a hell of a bass. And then... Uh, <laughs> and... And... Uh, Rich wrote Wild Eyes, Kim sang it. I played bass. <laughs> Amazingly. <laughs> yeah. So Rich was um, our most successful writer, pretty much. But, um, and I was always uh, trying to be, trying to write songs of social concern, if you know oh. what I mean. Like Then Came the White Man was, I, I was a kid from, I was a kid from Holland, like Eddie Van Halen. And, uh, and uh, you know, I played Cowboys and Indians when we were kids and whatnot. And then, then I saw the light <laughs> and uh, said, wait a minute. These, these people were trying to be nice. They were trying to give our land. Not that they had to take it and so on. But uh, so that's pretty much uh, why I wrote that song, Then Came the White Man. It's a little militant, I'll admit, but... What are you going to do? But like you said, like a strong social content. And I think it's kind of funny that you would have written that song so long ago. And now, um, you know, the relations between the indigenous people and whatnot. And, you know, it's so it's so much in the forefront now. So it's almost, it's almost yeah. like you were thinking ahead of, you know, you were thinking ahead of the times there. Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's difficult to, to, to say that, uh, that I was ahead of my time or anything like that, but it turns out maybe I was. I mean, uh, there's others that have had, you know, uh, Paul Revere and the Raiders. They took the whole Cherokee Nation. Right, yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, and I have uh, some indigenous friends in uh, Edmonton that uh, are good friends of mine. It's uh, Stephanie Harp. She runs a uh, rock and roll band as well. She, she's the lead singer, Stephanie Hart. Right. Stephanie Harp uh, Experience. And uh, she's also a, an advocate for uh, missing and murdered women, and uh, unfortunately, and so on. So, so we become good friends. Uh, you know, as I've had pretty much great luck uh, having indigenous friends all across Canada. And so on else, and uh, more or less shaking my hand, saying, you know, thanks for writing that for our people. Right, one hundred percent. And I think, I think, like, I really always respect when an artist uses their platform. You know, as long as it doesn't become out of control. But when when you have a platform and you have a voice, I think it's important, you know, to, to bring attention to some of these causes because I think, you know, you've been given this gift of this platform, and I think people generally really, you know, they, they look up to their artists that they admire and whatnot. And so, and well, so, yeah, I think that's amazing that you wrote that 
for sure. Like even yeah. back then, you know, what because back then, you know, now it's almost kind of like cool to write a song about it. But back then, it must have come from a really honest place because it wasn't such a thing back then to write songs like that in Canada. Yeah. You know, yeah. And so Todd yeah. Cook is saying, "Congrats on 50 years! Great show! Merry Christmas to both of you." Thank Merry you, Christmas. Uh, so Les King wants to know. Uh, he's asking. So, are you guys touring out west in 2023? Well, yes. It turns out. <laughs> 23 and uh yes we're st we're planning a, a spring, spring tour uh april may uh alberta saskatchewan manitoba check out our website stampeders.net and uh you'll see all the tour dates uh, and the past ones already where we've been and you can say oh how do they do it at their age and <laughs> <laughs> like, I think it keeps you young. I think being in this business keeps you young. I really do. For sure. Yeah, it's, it a, different, it's a different spirit all, all around. I do have a few dates. Um, I, I didn't get them all, but uh, just to span my viewership. So April 21st is the Burton Cummings Theatre in Winnipeg. Uh, Red oh, yeah. Deer is April 28th. May 16th is in my hometown of Regina. And the cool part is May 2nd and 3rd, you're in Lethbridge. You're in my oh. city. For Kitchen. two days, for two, <laughs> maybe we'll have lunch. <laughs> oh, and I'm curious why right? we got two shows in Lethbridge. We're the only one on the tour that got two shows. I think that must be because you just love it here. Wow. Well, I'm glad to. Uh, I'm glad to accommodate. I'll be up there. I'll be. I'll be being funny and uh, rocking <laughs> and rolling. <laughs> And so, who are some of your early in, earlier influences, Ronnie? Uh, earlier influences, well, you know, same as the Beatles. We went back and and Jerry Lee Lewis, Fats Domino, uh, Chuck Berry, and all of those guys, etc. That uh, that just we copied that uh, Roy Orbison, etc. You know. Uh, and we copied there was this cover tunes and all that we didn't uh, before we ever wrote our first song and so uh very proud to have been influenced by that and then the beatles came into vogue and all of it that uh, we just uh, said what the hell what? <laughs> at first we said what three guys four guys with hair like like mo from the three stooges and they're <laughs> They're called the Beatles. What? <laughs> what Tell me, whatever. Well, didn't we learn? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. That's that's funny. I, I, Mike, Michael Pachalak is in the house. Michael is a is a road manager, sound guy, uh, very well known and respected in the Canadian music industry. He's saying uh, right. hi to Kelly and Cornelius. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he must know you then. Loving the show. Merry Christmas to you guys and all the very best to you, Ronnie, Rich, and Kim, for your upcoming anniversary tour. Well, thank you very much. Yes. And Merry Christmas yes. to you. Awesome. Uh, What's with the Cornelius handle? Uh, I'll tell you. Okay. That's, okay. My, that's my given name. I was born in Rotterdam and Cornelius Van Sprang. And... Uh, so the story went, uh, we were playing the first annual American Song Festival in Saratoga Springs, New York. And uh, we were chosen as a Canadian band and uh, song festivals, everybody was on this show. Ray Charles, The Letterman, Etta James, uh, Jose Feliciano. And it was just a, <laughs> nonstop, you know, Wolfman Jack was going to be uh, emceeing. And so on, right? Now I had a a lady friend then that I was living with in Toronto, and said, "You know, why don't you fly down to Saratoga Springs? It can't be an hour." And so on. And uh, we're there for five, six days, and we you know, it's, we'll stable for a minute <laughs> rather than on tour all the time, right? Right. Oh, that'd be fun, nice, etc. So uh, I go meet her from the hotel with. I rent a car and uh, and I'm waiting and so on and and I see uh, Wolfman Jack was come walking out of one of the gates and so on right so uh, 
So I don't want to introduce myself. And uh, his manager, Donnie, uh, intercepts me and uh, says, how can I help you? I said, well, I just wanted to meet Wolfman. I'm, I'm in a band from Canada. And we're, uh, oh, wow, the Stampeders, Ronnie King. Wow, this and that. So uh, Wolfman Jack's about 10 feet behind him. And they're rubbing his eyes or whatever. He might have been tired, et cetera. So, tired. Uh, <laughs> tired. Yeah. So, so, uh, so Donnie, the manager, his manager says, uh, yeah, well, look at, look at this poster, all of the, all of the, there's your band and, and, uh, everybody's on this show, et cetera. And who is this? And, uh, it's oh, Ronnie King, the Stan Peters. And he says, oh, hi, Stan. No, 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 no. It wasn't Stan Peters. Stan Peters. <laughs> <laughs> that one week in a club appearing this week, Stan Peters. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, he's, uh, he's, uh, I'm sorry, Ronnie. I said, well, if you want to get right down to it, my given name is Cornelius Van Sprang. But, oh, I'm sorry, Cornelius, uh, Ronnie, uh, whatever the hell your name is. <laughs> you wouldn't have any, he says, you wouldn't have any shit, would you? <laughs> any what? Any shit. Oh, so I, said, shit. I don't know what you're into, but I, what kind I, of shit are you talking about? Let me see. I got your <laughs> Labrador. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, he said, oh, I said, well, I brought a couple of dupes to the airport here. Uh, you know, said, if you'd like one, I'll, I can give you one, whatever. Oh, you got any more? Uh, I said, yeah, we got, uh, we're there for a week at the, at the hotel, whatever else. I got a pretty good ounce, whatever. He said, oh, oh, oh Cornelius, I, I can see it now. Uh, 67 in cash box with the bullet. And uh, yeah, man, he, he's already laying hits on us. Right? <laughs> you know, and I said, well, okay. So I get back to my hotel. Couldn't get rid of Wolfman. Bring hey, Cornelius, that's some badass shit you got there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> he says, he says uh, I said, oh, you, you want some more? Yeah, your place or mine? So I said, whatever, come on up. <laughs> so sure enough, that's how I... I slay them all with <laughs> with pot. <laughs> and that's how and that's how Ronnie and Wolfman became friends. Ronnie was a yeah. badass drug dealer back in the day. Who knew? <laughs> Never a dealer, just give it to them. A right? giver, a sharer. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why. And then Wolfman loved that name, Cornelius. In fact, it's on our "Hit the Road" Jack, and which I sang lead on, and we do a little conversation. And uh, uh, what's what's happening, Cornelius? Uh, so, right. Yeah, when well, Wolf kicking me out, she told me to hit the road, Jack. So, so kind of a little sort of incognito comment there that would only that nobody would get except the band and people that know you. It, it makes sense because uh, without saying too much, your email is referencing that name, so it makes sense to me. And you know what's funny, Ronnie? Uh, mm -hmm. One of one of your fans mentioned about five minutes ago. It isn't Stan. <laughs> it isn't so. It wasn't Stan Peters. So there's somebody that knows a lot about you right there. That's uh, John Helfrich. Hey, John, thanks for being here tonight. Uh, Todd Cook is saying congratulations on 50 years. Uh, Merry Christmas to both of you. Thank you, Todd. Um, yeah, just tons of comments. I probably am not going to get to them all. Timothy Poilick, Merry Christmas to both of you. Back at ya. Here, you know, Ronnie, on a serious note, what makes you happy these days? And is it different? Is it different than what made you happy back then i would guess so uh to a certain extent it's just uh i just all of us feel so fortunate to be still wanted still still liked yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know and uh and to have people come up and say call us legends and you, know, you guys are legends and you're shaking sometimes no we're not i'm off duty i'll tell them <laughs> <laughs> I'm just an icon right now. <laughs> yeah, right. So uh, it just, uh, that has always made us happy and so on. And to this day and so on. So the fact that uh, Randy Backman said at one time, I don't know what I should be doing. I, I, I feel like I should be going on stage now, you know, <laughs> that's true. So, uh, 
we uh, we roll with it. You just say yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Smile and nod. <laughs> yeah. On, on we rock. <laughs> on you rock. Right on. So Andy Christ, uh, Andy's got a really good question for you. He says, um, he's loving the stories. What piece of musical gear do you have the deepest connection with? Good question. What? What's the what? What piece of musical gear do you have the deepest connection with? Musical gear? Yeah. Do you have like something, something that you're like a favorite, favorite bass or yeah, favorite brand yeah, well, I uh, quite loved uh, my bass. Ran through a uh, Galeon Kruger amplifier with uh, four tens and a nice fifteen inch ba speaker back there. And then nowadays, uh, you know, the sound man puts everything through the uh, monitors and whatnot. So. Uh, you know, uh, and I've always uh, played a, a pre-bass, a precision, a Fender precision bass. So uh, I have two of them. And uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> right on. Great question, Andy. Uh, oh, Medina Sebastian's in the house. Um, Medina's from Argentina, so we got like kind of an international crowd in the house tonight, which is awesome. Yeah, here's a question I've never asked anybody before, but I think it's a fun question. And I, because you know, I think the I think the fans they, they want to know about you know you as a person and maybe before you got into the industry. Can you share with us just for fun, Ronnie, a job that you had before music that wasn't music related? I have done. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think one of my first jobs was uh, gas. I, I, you know, serving gas in the days when they'd ser you'd serve gas and wash the windows, et cetera, and whatnot. Right. And then when I went to go for another job, they said previous experiment experience. So I put gas pump ass, meaning <laughs> gas, gas pump assistant. assistant. <laughs> yeah. So then I would I uh, play, uh, ground lenses at Con Optical. Con optical, oh, right. yeah, grinding lenses, and uh, from that job, I I went to uh, similar to Roz Stewart, uh, Doug uh, Graves, apparently. Is that uh, right? <laughs> I, I worked at a funeral home in Calgary, and uh, my job was car man. You know, keep the fleet of uh, uh, limos and and uh, the coach we were meant to have to call the. Uh, the hearse is a coach, right. all right? Oh. Politically correct and so on. So, uh, you know, and uh, everything like that, uh, we were we were taught to uh, politically correct called, it's it's the people's loved ones, okay? It's not the guy, the dead guy's people. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be politically correct in that industry for sure. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we, uh, Slowly, I think that's no, that's not the job I left. That from there, I went to Canada Iron to be a welder. So Canadian, that's so Canadian. And and so, at what point do you decide that to heck with all these jobs? I'm going to go and be a rock star. Like, did you know from a very early age that you wanted to take a musical path, Ronnie? Or I was 13, 14 when my dad my dad got an acoustic guitar that he bought through his boss. My dad was a barber. And uh, through his boss, it was an acoustic guitar. And uh, I remember sleeping one morning and whatever else, and he was standing in the doorway with, in his underwear, uh, just plinking on the guitar because he didn't know any chords, but just, uh, hey, how are you like this? <laughs> He'd be laughing and so on. I said, where'd you get that? Where's it? That? So I was just enthralled with the, and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't put it down. I just had to learn. And then uh, the hits of the day, uh, none of us play by ear, but uh, none of us read music. We right. play by ear. So uh, anything that we would learn, uh, Roy Orbis, da 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 we learned the riff, the chords, the chord structure, the lyrics, and everything else, and then uh, and then expanded more. So Chuck Berry, you know, uh, Johnny, be good, just uh, rock and roll. So 
uh, you know. So when do you get your first band? Like, when do you decide that I'm going to give this an honest effort and, and try and make a living at this? My first band was called The Echoes. Okay. Soon changed to the Echo Tones after that. Had the same manager as the became the Stampeders manager, Mel Shaw. So I was used to him and uh, what have you. But uh, uh, that that man, I guess, broke up and then... And then Mel Shaw got, we used to fill this uh, place with 300 people that, down in East Calgary, et cetera. And uh, uh, one time, we, <laughs> our manager's fault, we had Sweet Daddy Siki, the wrestler, uh, come and he could sing too. Uh, Stagger Lee, and, and we didn't even know the chords and so on else. But anyway, one, now there's a scrap in the in the audience. There's a, Young, these young guys were fighting and so on else. So sweet daddy Siki dives down there and pulls these two kids apart, throws them aside, back up on the stage, singing again. So, uh, yeah. As you do. We just kind of just. We just we happened. Were, exactly. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Good times. I think, I really think you should finish your book. You do. I think you'd have a ton of stories to tell. Just just from chatting with you now, I th I think that that would be a book that people would want to read. I I, I think that you should finish it. Perhaps. <laughs> Thanks. John, I will. You you'll do that. Just uh, don't. John Halfrick wants to know: Do you have any new influences in today, like in today's music? Any newer music haven't... from today that uh, that you're influenced by or listen to? Oh, I see. Uh, well, I. I like uh, Keb Mo, Keb Mo, Keb Mo. I like uh, Peter Gabriel. Oh, love Peter Gabriel, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, I've always liked sophisticated rock and roll. I had a band in Calgary uh, during the 80s uh, called the Ronnie King Band. And uh, man, we played some sophisticated rock and roll there. There was a, a couple of musicians, uh, David Knight, uh, Dennis Davies, and uh, Rod Parton, and uh, we rock the place and so on. Uh, Carl Erickson, saxophone player and so on. Us, so we would uh, we do stuff like uh, Steely Dan, uh, Are oh, You Really in yeah. the Years? Great stuff. Right? Et cetera. So, uh, and uh, what else? Uh, Sultans of Swing. Oh, we rocked that one. I'll tell you. <laughs> Great <too. laughs> So I see what you mean by sophisticated music, Ronnie, because it's it's like intelligent music. It's not just it's not just simple three chord rock and roll that you can pump out. It's I, I totally right. get what you mean by sophisticated music when you mentioned Steely Dan and yeah, yeah, one hundred percent, yeah. So, so I just want to take a second here and thank. Uh, I'm so grateful to have these guys on board, Ronnie. They are my show sponsors, and they're called Writers and Rockers Coffee Company, and they have Rockstar endorsed coffee blends. So I have here Trooper has Raise a Little Hell. So I just want to give a big shout out to my show sponsors. Uh, so great to have them on board. And uh, yeah, still time to get some coffee for Christmas for the rock stars in your life or the readers or the, you know, maybe we can get a Stampeders Sweet City Woman coffee blend on the go. For sure. For <laughs> sure. That would, that would be awesome, eh? <laughs> yes, it would be awesome. And uh, in, my, in my booze days, I would say, oh, yeah. Put, put it on a bottle of vodka or whatever, but uh, I don't uh, do boozing anymore. No, you don't do boozing anymore. Actually, they have vodka too, people. They have <laughs> Writers and Rockers now now has hard shot vodka and also coffee liqueur. So check out the website, writersandrockers.com. So yeah, okay. yeah, so you packed in the boozing, did you? No, I quit. <laughs> That's quit what I mean. Yeah, yeah, good for you. Yeah. Yeah, January 10th, 2021. Oh, so last year. Almost two years now. Good for you. Good for you, my friend. Mm -hmm. That's that's not an easy one to do. So good good on you. It's a proud moment. One hundred percent. Are you better behaved now? <laughs> that's that's what's got me saying. That's what's got me saying. It's all me. It's all it's me. All me. <laughs> right, I know, but on a serious note, Ronnie, congratulations. That's that's not easy to do. And uh, two years is, you know, that's amazing. One day at a time, my brother. I think that's awesome. 
Thank you very much. 100%. So before we go, your run I have one more question for you. What do you, what would you consider the, the best moment of your life? The best moment of our life? Uh, well, there's a couple, I suppose. And it can be but personally or professionally. It doesn't necessarily have to be musically. Just one of those moments. No, no but the fact that uh, the very first time I went back to where I was born in Holland, uh, that was a wondrous thing to me and someone else. And I'm going to be going again in this coming March. Uh, yeah, so... That was very exciting, but I mean, touring the world, uh, Hawaii twice, uh, South America, you know, Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo, uh, in Brazil, you know, and uh, uh, then Europe and France, Holland, uh, England, Great Britain, and we played. We played some of the biggest clubs that ever was uh, the Marquee Club in London, where all the well, all the guys uh, jammed uh, from the Hollies to the Stones to, uh, you know, etc. We played that club. We played uh, the Whiskey Go-Go. Oh, and, cool. Uh, That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I, I forget. <laughs> we played a Canadian one, too, but I forget. <laughs> <laughs> like, I must have been in Toronto, I'm thinking. Yeah. At the Alma Combo, maybe in Toronto? I don't know. Just, oh, that's that it? it. Oh, okay. yeah. yay. yay. <laughs> we can all sleep tonight. <laughs> I, I had uh, played there before without the Stampeders because they left me alone for a while, you know. <laughs> they, should, they shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Ronnie was left unattended. It was not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> they shouldn't have done that because... I wanted the band to be funky, so I wrote this song called Bring the House Down. <laughs> it, was, it was a funky motherfucker, I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, sorry. That just happened. <laughs> it's okay. It's all good. Sorry, watching George Carlin. Sorry. <laughs> That's all good. No worries whatsoever. <laughs> Ronnie King, you are delightful. You are <laughs> absolutely delightful, and you are welcome back here anytime. <laughs> uh, bless your heart uh, and as you are delightful as well oh thank you so much and and i just i and i'm looking forward to seeing you on one of your two shows here uh in the spring uh everybody check out uh check out the tour dates coming out uh ronnie do you want to just tell the viewers your website again that you repeated earlier stampeders spelt the same way as those soccer players sorry football players uh <laughs> Stampeters.net. N E T. There you go, folks. You can you can check out your tickets there and, and the tour dates. And uh yeah. yeah, I can't thank you enough for your time. And uh viewers, thank you for tuning in. This will be my last show. So I just want to wish you all uh, an amazing Christmas, wishing you health, happiness, and all things amazing in 2023, mm -hmm. Ronnie, as well as the viewers. And uh we'll be back with the new show of the new year with uh Prism, with all the guys from Prism. Another Canadian uh, rock band that I love. So, yes. Uh, so, Ronnie, thank you so much for your time. Say say goodbye to Cindy for me. I will. Uh, she's in the background there. Um, Ron Hockey, thanks for joining us. Toby, Toby Bartlett, sorry, hon. Toby's my good friend. She's saying Merry Christmas. People are Merry just jumping in. I'm not going to have time. Ronnie, you can go ahead and answer. Merry Christmas to everyone, all of your listeners and so on else. And Merry Christmas especially to Kelly. Oh. Thank yeah. you, my friend. <laughs> Thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. Merry Christmas. And uh, until we see you next time, take care, stay safe, be really nice to each other. Bye-bye. See you on the road. <laughs> on the road, Jack. <laughs>